Welcome. Uh, well, it's a pleasure for us to have my dad here to speak today, so he'll speak to us, the God's Word. One of the things we do in our church is we um, try to get God's Word inside of us, so we memorize one verse a week. We try to memorize one verse a week. Uh, many times we're driving or we don't have access to the, the, the God's Word, and so we try to put it into our memory so that we can meditate on it and hopefully be changed by it over time. I know that's happened to my life as I've committed things to memory. I can draw from it in a moment of discouragement or a moment of temptation. So right now we're studying Philippians chapter 3. We are memorizing Philippians chapter 3 and we are memorizing the passage, a beautiful passage in Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7 onwards. Even for those of you who are visitors, I highly recommend this passage. It's a beautiful passage about the Christian life. So we're up to verse 12, and it's a long passage, and there are a lot of words in it. So if you're like me, you have trouble getting all the words in the right sequence. <laughs> so you can have your Bibles in front of you, or and slowly, hopefully over the weeks, we're able to slowly commit these words to memory. So we can recite it together. Philippians chapter 3, we'll do 7 through 12. All right, we'll do it slowly. But whatever things were gained to me, these things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but the righteousness which is through Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on in order that I may lay hold of that of which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. As I said in my email to the church this week, Verse 12 is a wonderful verse to never forget, even if we don't know the words exactly, the essence of it. And then obviously in verse 13, he goes on to saying that too. It's not as if we have obtained this. We have not come to the fullness of a life where we know him completely and are found in him all the time. Or that we are perfectly in that state. But I press on. So it's available to the person who is a murderer, a thief on the cross, an adulterer, and to the one who has all kinds of self-righteousness. We can all press on towards the same goal of verses 8, 9, and 10, and 11. That I count things as loss, that I call things as rubbish, that I may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, and that I might know him. And I want to just share that my thought on this verse 9 and 10. That, that the 9 verse 9 is a starting point for all of us. That the one place that all of us can find safety in, the one place that all of us should be found in, is in Christ. If you're insecure, if we are beating ourselves up because of our poor track record. Here's the solution. If I think I'm somebody because I've started overcoming sin, if I think I've become somebody spiritual, here's the conviction of God too. This is the only place the Apostle Paul wanted to be found. If we went searching for the Apostle Paul, we knew where he physically would be in Ephesus or Corinth or somewhere, but where was Paul in his spirit? He wanted to be only one place, to be found in Christ, not having a righteousness of his own. And so that's a starting point that all of us can find who we are supposed to be 
in Christ. We never need to have, be insecure about anything that we may choose to be found in Him. Being fully justified. Looked at if we've always obeyed. Looked as if we've never sinned. And then the, our present continuous life. That's the foundation that we're found in Him. Lord Jesus, I'm found in You. You've placed me in You. God, you look at me, that I have your righteousness. That's what it says. The righteousness which comes from God in verse 9. This is God's own righteousness. That he looks at me with God's own righteousness because I'm found in Christ. But then verse 10 is the present continuous life. That I may know him. And that's the essence of our life. That we come back to being conformed to the image of his son. That Another way of saying that, Paul would have said in verse 10, that we know Christ. That we know Jesus better today than we did five years ago. We have a better understanding of who Christ is. Maybe even through all the mysteries. Maybe all through all our failures. We have a bigger view, a better view of Christ. And Christ is becoming more central to us. That's the pursuit of our life. To know Him. And to know most of all the power of His resurrection. First of all the power of His resurrection. God wants to raise us up to life in every situation. And based on that, based on that resurrection life, God says, hey, look, also in the fellowship of his sufferings, even if it means death, death on a cross, no matter what it is. But for me, I, it's the joy of the fellowship with God that keeps me from sin. It is because Christ is becoming more special to me that God's God's word to take up my cross is not burdensome. Yes, it's difficult because my flesh has to die, but it's less and less burdensome because God first gives me a taste of the power of his resurrection and resurrection life because I keep choosing to be found in him. I don't choose to be found in myself and in my job and in my marriage or in my children or in my wealth, or lack of it, or education, or lack of it. I lose all of those things, and I choose to be found in Him. And that security, and that knowledge of Him, the power of that resurrection, is what are all of those things, are all the positive forces that are allowing me to say, okay, I'll fellowship, I'll fellowship in your sufferings as well. I used to try many times... I thought the fellowship of the suffering was what I did first and I kept being burdened under the yoke of the law of keeping on trying to obey the commandments. But I never experienced the power of His resurrection, the resurrecting power of the Holy Spirit who sought to raise me up and make me united with Christ like a husband is to a wife. Christ the resurrected bridegroom with me, the new man. And as I have experienced that, as God has drawn me towards him, I find that sin becomes less attractive. That when God tells me, Will you wanna, do you want a fellowship in my sufferings? I say, yes, Lord, I can do that. That's the hope we have. So hope that that's the hope for our church, that we may be found in him, a righteousness not of our own, and that we may know him power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, no matter where he takes us. May God help us. Let us sing. We're going to sing a few songs. There's power in the blood. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus. We fall down. We lay our crowns. Through it all, through it all, Jesus has been with us. We can, we can say that through it all, God has never failed us. And that last song, Give Me Jesus. So we'll get the children in the back and then we can sing these songs.